So as far as how less invasive surgery has really changed my practice, I think it has been a great transition over, or evolution, I, I should say, over the course of my career uh, from doing a uh, specifically open uh, adult reconstructive fellowship to doing a lot of self-directed learning and continued learning over the last 10 years into less invasive techniques. I think that the availability of technology has been amazing to, to help with this, as well as surgeon education, specifically with Nuvasiv. Uh, I do think that um, patients really are looking for uh, state-of-the-art care, which includes newer technology. There's a lot of marketing around less invasive surgery. So it certainly has helped to uh, increase my uh, patient volume and really maintain you know, on edge with the latest technologies and uh, provide the best care for my patients in a very competitive environment that I work in. So less invasive surgery has really changed my practice in several ways. Uh, in particular, it allows me to offer some options for patients that'll minimize the time that they spend in a hospital setting. In particular, during the current viral pandemic environment, that's actually very appealing to patients as well as to me. Uh, I don't think being in hospitals is necessarily dangerous, but giving, uh, or given the option of doing surgery in a surgery center as opposed to in a hospital facility, uh, I would generally lean towards going to that surgery center now really just for patient safety and peace of mind uh, to keep them away from uh, the COVID patients as much as possible. Uh, and patients really are sensitive to that in this day and age. And when I really lay that out for them in my office, they often very quickly jump on the surgery center option. A lot of the fusion procedures that we do are not really amenable to a surgery center environment unless it's a really minimally invasive approach. So having less invasive options to execute inner body fusions, whether it's an X lift or a T lift and percutaneous screw fixation really has opened up a certain sliver or percentage of my practice to a surgery center environment, which is really nice. Well, less invasive or minimally invasive surgery has really revolutionized my practice. Um, it's, it's become one of the mainstays of the, of the procedures that I uh, end up recommending for patients, both for lumbar pathology um, and also for, for cervical pathologies as well. Um, it's really my go-to when I think about being able to treat a patient, and, and I really try to, try to focus on that when I present treatment options, as long as it's a reasonable uh, thing to offer to treat the problem that the patient has. Um, as far as benefits uh, that I see for the patient from minimally invasive surgery, uh, in addition to the, um, to the incisions obviously being cosmetically smaller and more appealing, I think really the most important thing is um, preservation of the soft tissue structures, minimizing approach-related morbidity, really staying away from, from adjacent uh, disc levels or adjacent uh, facet capsules, to, um, to hopefully avoid some of the, some of the problems that, that these procedures can cause when performed in an open fashion. So how less invasive surgery changed my practice? Well, you know, I can tell you, um, you know, aside from the obvious answers as far as, you know, infection, length of stay, uh, blood loss, those sorts of things, you know, it really has enabled my patients to really uh, get home a lot quicker than what they would traditionally with open surgery. And I've had a couple uh, people call me like, are you sure they don't need a brace? Are you sure they don't have a drain and those sorts of things? About 10 years ago, there was a big wave of what's called the direct anterior uh, total hip arthroplasty. And you know what that did is basically the same thing as minimally invasive spine surgery, where the ultimate outcome is very similar. If you look at kind of the one and two year outcome, it just gets people there quicker. And um, so people feel very good very quickly, as opposed to me trying to say, hey, you know, try to walk, try to go to your therapy, try to do things, you know, really have to try to slow people down to say, hey, you know, don't lift more than 15, 20 pounds for the first three months and really try to uh, not stress the implants too much, even though, you know, with these large A lift, X lift, MIST lift, whatever you're putting in, uh, they're usually are pretty solid. So I think the thing that less invasive surgery, that the, the whole way we look at less invasive surgery and patients do is changed a lot. Now, in our community, it's really become spine surgery. That's really been the expectation, especially in competitive markets. 
that patients come in, they don't want big incisions. They, they expect an almost outpatient experience where people are going home the next day, even on lumbar fusions, especially in this COVID, this post COVID or, or COVID type atmosphere. The, the hospitals and the hospital administrators, uh, especially coming out in May, really did not want us to have anybody in beyond 23 hours. So having a minimally invasive practice made me and my partners that much more valuable to the hospital. And they actually, while reluctant to offer some other surgeons block time and, and resources gave us quite a bit of resources, staff, block time when it was scarce. And that was because we were doing a less invasive type of panel of patients. That being said, the patient selection obviously went into that, they, that we, we did uh, uh, less frail patients we were, we were selecting patients that were far, um, far healthier. Uh, but now, as we get into June and July, we're getting, again, more and more resources from the hospital. And then the ASC, as the ASCs out there are, are, are obviously going to be quite a bit busier given the COVID market. And they require that the surgeries be less invasive, less morbid and as we, as we move through this period. Less invasive surgery has completely revolutionized my practice. Uh, you gotta keep in mind that my fellowship training was at Washington University in St. Louis back in the day with Keith Bridwell, Larry Lenke, and Dan Rue. A lot of my fellowship was spent on either T2 or T10 to the pelvis, big open surgeries, huge osteotomies. And while I'm grateful for learning from the best, my philosophy has definitely evolved over time. After seeing the complications from these big open surgeries, I had really an epiphany that oftentimes less is more for patients. If I can accomplish all the same goals of surgery with decompression of compressed neural elements, maintenance or restoration of alignment, stabilization of unstable segments, all through less invasive means, I have found multiple advantages not the least of which is quicker recovery for patients, me being able to perform more surgeries, and being able to market myself in a competitive market in the Bay Area.